All right, we're back with video number two for section 15. Section 15, I'm basically just going to start to call buffer solutions, but section 15 is called applications of acid base equilibria. And this basically, this example that you see is, I, I had no choice but to rewrite it because I wanted to, I wanted to have it right here in our notes today, because we're going to work, we're going to work off of this example. So if you just got done watching the last video, this is uh, section 15, video number two. And what you're seeing right now is what you saw at the end of video number one. So I'm just going to repeat it and go through it. And then we're going to build off of it because what I'm doing in this example problem is I'm, I'm making a buffer. And if you remember, the pH of this is going to end up being 4.74. So I'm making a buffer and then I'm going to add something to the buffer that's a really strong base and then I want to see what happens to the OH minus that I add to this buffer because the OH minus needs to go away if it doesn't go away the pH is going to skyrocket and that's not what a buffer does the buffer somehow takes care of this OH minus that I'm going to add or it, it the term they use is quenches we're going to quench this OH minus and that begins at the next page. And there's basically a two-step approach where the first step is the only thing that's really different. So it says the buffer solution contains 0.50 molar acetic acid, 0.50 molar sodium acetate. Sound familiar? Calculate the pH of the solution. We get rid of all the neutral species. We set up our ice table. And the remember, we have a common ion now, the sodium acetate gives us the acetate to begin with. So the initial concentrations, there's two of them for once. 0 0.50 molar acetic acid, 0 0.50 molar acetate, the far right product. I do my minus X's, my plus X's. Solve for this. This is just a reproduction of what you saw at the end of the last video. The pH, if you remember, is minus the log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. My pH of this buffer that I've just now made is 4.74. All right, there's my buffer. Imagine that in an Erlenmeyer flask, it's ready to go, it's waiting for me. And then I'm gonna do something to it right now. I'm gonna introduce a strong base to this. And I wanna see what happens and then what the final outcome is. So it says pH is 4.74. pH of a buffer, which is a buffer solution in this particular case of acetic acid and acetate, okay? Double lines, I'm getting ready to add OH minus now. I need to set it up for you in our notes. It says, now, because this is a buffer, it resists a change in pH upon the addition of acid, H plus, or base, OH minus, okay? All right, how does this happen? Well, I'm going to show you with the following example. Now, this example builds off of the one we just completed. All right, it says, calculate the change in pH that occurs when 0 0.010 moles, that's an amount of something, right? 0 0.10 moles NaOH solid is added to 1.0 liter of the buffer from above, from the last problem. Now, NaOH, that breaks up completely into Na plus neutral and OH minus. The OH minus is 0 0.010 moles, okay? If that would remain OH minus the whole time that I've added it to my buffer, the pH would skyrocket. So something's happening to the OH minus. We want to see what that is. All right, so just let me reread. Calculate the change in pH that occurs when 0 0.010 moles NaOH is added to a liter of the buffer from above. Then compare this pH change with that which occurs when the same amount of NaOH were added to just water instead of a buffer. So here's the approach. Only number one is new. Number two is just, okay, now that number one is done, do the equilibrium expression, do the ice table. So number one says, Realize that NaOH solid, very strong base, completely dissociates, and the OH minus is going to react 
completely or a 100% with any acid that's around. OH- is a really strong base. He's extremely good at doing what? Accepting H+. If there's any source of H+, around, like a weak acid, OH will grab it all and, make, and turn himself into water. Okay? So, realize that NaOH completely dissociates and the OH- reacts completely with any acid that's around. Carry out those stoichiometric calculations, and we're going to do that. We'll have a before and an after. We're going to do that right now. And then step two is just, now that you've done step one, now do your ice method. So number one, okay, major species. Before any reaction takes place, I have Na+, plus, OH-, minus. I have HC2H3O2, my weak acid. I have C2H3O2 minus, my common ion from acetate, and I have water, of course. Water is neutral. The Na plus that came from sodium hydroxide, NaOH is neutral. Now, OH minus is a strong base. So who's he going to attack? He's going to attack the acetic acid, HC2H3O2. Let's set that up. OH minus will react with HC2H3O2. 100% it will yield. C2H3O2 minus, so we're going to make even more of that, plus H2O liquid. So the OH minus is going to be gone. Okay, The OH minus is a reactant here, and 100% of it moves to the right towards product. And what's on the product side? C2H3O2 minus, okay? not OH minus. So we have a weaker base around. So before any reaction occurs, we know we have 0 0.010 moles of OH minus. We have one liter times the molarity of acetic acid or 0 0.50 moles of acetic acid. In a one liter solution of acetate, acetate being 0 0.50 molar, we have 0 0.50 moles. Water will ignore. After reacting, the very strong base, OH minus, we have zero moles of it now because it totally reacted 100%. So stoichiometrically, then I have to remove 0 0.010 moles from acetic acid to get 0.49 moles, and I have to add, because I'm on the product side, I have to add that value of X, or that value of 0.01, if you will. So now I have 0.51 moles of acetate. My original 0 0.50 plus the additional 0 0.01 moles that came from OH minus moving to the right. So that's that. That's all you do. You have a before and an after with a 100% reaction of OH minus going to the right. Now I'm going to have a slightly different equilibrium expression. Let's have a look. The OH minus is gone. We're back to our original guys, HC2H3O2 minus and its common ion, C2H3O2 minus. So I set it up. I have my initial, I have my change, and I have my equilibrium, okay? Now, in the original problem, the initials were 0 0.50 and 0 0.50. Now my acetic acid is 0.49, and my acetate is 0.51. That's the only lasting effect that the addition of the 0 0.01 moles of OH- minus did. We've really kind of taken out the power of it all, haven't we? So we do our minus x's, our plus x's. Equilibrium is 0.49 minus x for acetic acid, 0.51 plus x for acetate. Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth equals concentration of products over the concentration of reactants, which is roughly equal to x times 0.51 all over 0.49. So x is equal to H plus, which is equal to 1.7 times 10 to the minus fifth molar pH equals minus the log of H plus, or minus the log of 1.7 times 10 to the minus fifth. My pH is 4.76. What was it before I added OH minus? It was 4.74, right? So geez, I've only gone up 0.02 pH units, and I added a really strong base. Okay, buffers work, and they work for the reasons I just showed you. That OH minus is quenched. It goes away, it turns into H2O by reacting with the H in HC2H3O2. What does it say here in the box? So, change in pH upon addition of NaOH to our buffer was minimal, 0.02 pH units. 
what would have happened if we added 0 0.01 moles of OH minus or NaOH, either one, uh, to just pure water, which is not a buffer? Would the pH stay around 7? No, it would not. And let's have a look at that right now. Now, if 0 0.010 moles of NaOH had been added to one liter of water instead of the buffer, what would have happened? Well, the calculation is much easier. Um, we have pure water, which is neutral. So all we have to really deal with is our OH minus. 0.01 moles of OH minus in a one liter solution means my concentration is the same number, 0.010 molar OH minus. Calculate the POH directly from the OH minus concentration. POH is minus the log of OH minus. The POH ends up being 2.00, which means the pH is what? 12, right? Remember that pH plus POH equals 14.00. Wow, it skyrocketed five pH units. And it says here, change in pH is 12.00 minus neutral water of seven equals 5.00 pH units, which is way, way more than the 0.02 pH units that our buffer was able to withstand. All right, so that should clarify it there. In water, right, there was no way to get rid of the OH minus. It stays around, and if it sticks around, you get, a, you get an enormously high pH value. All right, question with a little squiggly underneath it, which means I'm gonna have an answer with a squiggly underneath it after I pose the question. So let's let this question build up here. The question says, and I should have enough room underneath this to write the answer. If not, I'll write the answer on the next page of notes. But the question is, how exactly does a buffer work? How can its pH not increase when a strong base NaOH is added? Well, I've kind of said it out loud, right? The OH minus that gets introduced I could have also introduced H plus, right? Strong acid, and we'll do that in the next video. But if I introduce OH minus, okay, it's not around. It gets quenched. It gets it gets converted into H2O. So the answer, the net result is that free OH minus ions are not allowed to accumulate. They don't stick around. We get rid of them. For example, OH minus aqueous in the last sample problem is not around for that long. If you remember, the OH minus reacted 100% towards products when it reacted with HC2H3O2, and then our products were water, H2O, and the acetate, C2H3O2 minus. So in the last, in the last problem, the OH minus wasn't around very long, but instead it got replaced by the much weaker base on the product side, C2H3O2 minus, according to the following equation, which I had already written when we did the, the problem. OH minus plus HC2H3O2, 100% all the OH minus went away. In other words, it was quote, quenched, and we produced C2H3O2 minus, a much, much weaker base than OH minus. That's why the pH doesn't go up that much, okay? The OH minus is gone, and at the end, when we do our equilibrium calculations to solve for H plus concentration, there is no OH minus in there, only C2H3O2 minus, only HC2H3O2. Okay. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Well, every time I do an ice expression, I'm sorry, an ice method or an ice table, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation as long as we know the Ka or Kb value, really, for that matter, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation as a shortcut to the ICE method. So I'll talk a little bit about that in the next video, and then we're also going to continue our discussion with buffers in the next video. So if you like the way I do these handwritten chemistry notes, I have the full course for general chemistry, the full course for organic chemistry. You can find all of these notes at chemistrynotes.com. So check that out and stick around for video number three from section 15 coming up next.